Hey everybody, uh, it's Greg Nedell from Rev. Uh, I hope that you had a great uh, kickoff and that you're deep in, uh, into the game and figuring out what your team is going to build. Um, every year, Rev and our, our crew here, we like to take the first couple days after kickoff and do a bunch of prototyping videos to show you how you can utilize a lot of the parts and components that might be in your Rev starter kit or that you might already have in your shop. So we built this this robot, obviously there's no motors on it. We didn't go, we don't, we're not trying to solve the problem for you. We're just trying to illustrate some ideas and you'll get that also with some of the other uh, robot in 30 hours or robot in three day videos as well. So we hope that the videos that uh, come after this are a uh, good help to your team uh, and let us know uh, if you want to see more. Hey everyone, before we get uh, prototyping, uh, one of the things I think it's always important to do is kind of to get to know your game pieces. So this year we've got the blocks or stones, or stones, stones, stones. stones. Um, that's going to be a thing. So um, these are these are they look like they're blow molded. Um, they feel very similar to the relic from a couple years ago. They've got about a similar weight to that. Um, there's a couple features that are kind of worth pointing out to you. Um, all the edges are really rounded. Um, the sides are not actually flat. They're actually really concave. So you kind of have to keep that in mind a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of in and out, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, when, when they're in position, they, they do seem to lock, um, lock together pretty well, and um, they're pretty even, so that's pretty good. Um, the, only, the only real thing that we saw in doing this is we found an occasional one that seemed like the top was warped of one of the stones. So when you, when you just kind of push it, it does something like that versus nothing. Um, so we'll see kind of how that plays. I think you wouldn't want th like that one at the bottom of your tower, but um, because all, most of these are loaded in by a human player, it might be something that throughout the season, your human player will be able to identify if like the top is bowed up a little bit. But generally speaking, they have pretty consistent game piece. Um, the actual foundation itself, it's pretty stout. Yeah, wouldn't be stepping on it, but I, it, it should be okay. Yeah, don't drive on it, but it's gonna it's gonna survive uh, survive pretty well, and it, it's pretty easy to push on the uh, on the tiles so far. So that's the game pieces. Uh, so we're gonna get uh, rolling on uh, some scoring breakdown and some prototypes, and uh, we'll be back. So we're here with the foundation and some stones to see how these guys interact. Some of you may not actually have been able to play with the foundation at your kickoff. So we're gonna do some testing here for you. So as you can see on the foam tiles themselves, this foundation actually slides pretty easily, um, especially when there's no weight on it, like there will, like there won't be at the start of autonomous. But um, as you start to stack these stones on top of them, uh, you'll start to realize that like there is going to be, you're gonna have to be a lot more careful when you start to move this foundation around. After about eight bricks or so, you can start to see that it does wobble when you start to move it. Even, even at a slow speed, it does wobble, so you will have to be careful. After a certain point, though, stacking up, the variability in these stones will also mean that the tower will begin to tilt. So moving it quickly at all might cause your tower to tilt. Hey, everybody. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a rules breakdown here. Um, and basically, um, what I've already done is I've kind of laid out a couple things for figuring out what the uh, maximum number of points for autonomous is. Uh, in FTC games, autonomous is always very, very important. And so what we want to do is we really want to try to maximize our points. So when you're trying to figure out uh, what to build and, and also what we're trying to figure out is what to prototype, we're going to do that based on um, the, uh, the scoring, right? So we're all out there to get as many points as we can. So in autonomous, there's a couple different things you can do. You can reposition your uh, your foundation, and that's worth 10 points if you move the foundation from the center to the thing. Um, if you move a sky stone, which is one of the stones with one of the vision stickers on it, and you move that one underneath your your 14 inch bridge all the way, uh, that's worth uh, t 10 points if it's one of the first two stones. So the first two stones that you do are go through there, that's 20 points. That's a huge amount of points in this game. So vision, very important, but I know there's been some really great work for uh, Vuforia and for uh, TensorFlow that's built into the new SDK, and those are going to make it uh, really, it's still a challenge, but it's a one that's really accessible for you. 
Um, next, uh, just moving stones that are not sky stones. Uh, those are worth two points apiece. So if you already moved the sky stones, you've got six, uh, you have four more of these left. So you have eight points there total. Um, placing stones. So if you take your stones and move them all the way over to your foundation, um, whether your foundation has moved or not, um, every stone that's on your foundation is going to be worth points. In autonomous, the placements are worth four points each. So that is also a huge amount. So, so it's a huge challenge, but there are some really big points here on autonomous if you can kind of do that. So what you want to do is you want to do that. So since you have a, a total of uh, six that you can do and they're four points each, you can get up to 24 points for doing that. Um, and then lastly, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a, a, a navigating bonus or parking. And basically there's a tape line that goes across the field. If you can end autonomous touching that tape line or straddling that tape line, uh, you'll get an additional five points. So when you add all of that up, what you'll see is the maximum points that you can get in autonomous are 72 points. If you can get anywhere close to that, you're going to be in pretty darn good shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on trying to maximize those points. So from the way you see this, we see that repositioning is worth 10 points and it's a reasonably simple task, you think, because pushing the foundation is actually feels pretty easily. So we're going to try to figure out what it takes to, to, to do that, maybe something that grips onto it. It was like a trailer hitch. I know Mac was talking about borrowing uh, the technology off the Ford F-150's trailer alignment. But we're going to go and grip onto this and slide it around. Um, and then we're also going to, we're not going to touch on vision today, but whether you're talking about vision or you're talking about a regular stone, figuring out a way to pick them up from this line and move them efficiently is a huge thing. So we're going to look at different intakes that we can pick up very specifically when they're from sitting from this position. So this is going to drive some of our decisions because we think being able to pick up or, or intake in from that position is going to be really important. And then lastly, placing stones. Now placing stones are, you know, you have to get up this two inch lip on top of the foundation. So that already means that you pretty much have to pick them up. So for this day's prototype, we may just look at if we pick them up somehow or we lift them, maybe we try to build a little elevator. Um, we're just going to kind of touch on a couple different ways to lift them up because if you can lift them up, you can put them down, right? I pick things up, I put them down. And then uh, last one, parking. Uh, it's kind of assumed that uh, if you can drive and you can do the rest of these things, you'll be able to get those points. So um, that's what we're going to focus on first. So uh, we're going to go uh, work on that now and uh, we'll come back and check in. Hey everybody, we're just here to check in on our drivetrain. So some of the decisions that we made um, based on the autonomous scoring kind of breakdown and the total points that were available, uh, we decided that we wanted to go with a mechanism drivetrain. So we kind of put together this uh, basic structure here. So we're using some 13 or uh, 15 by 30 uh, millimeter extrusion here, which allows us to uh, cantilever really, really easily and have it be fully supported. Um, the mechanism wheels themselves will allow us to kind of be able to skirt around and move through. Um, we put in some shafts here that are a little, a little bit on the shorter side um, so that we're able to kind of just get a rolling chassis together. It's really important to have a physical chassis that is going to be pretty representative of what you're going to be building with or, or building off of um, as you're getting through your prototype. So we're going to basically just use this as a base. And we added a little bit of rigidity in the back because we have a feeling that we're probably going to be putting an arm or an elevator or something is going to be going back here um, that likely we're going to need to be doing some stacking so we wanted to have some extra rigidity but up front we're able to easily remove this um, so that we're able to attach different intakes and other things as we're kind of going uh, along the way so this will be a good little little place for us to be able to start off and we're able to get some things attached to this and test them out so we need to be able to talk about intakes and picking up these game objects because a part of our breakdown of the game was that that was going to be extremely important, especially in autonomous mode. So the way that we're going to kind of be thinking about this and focusing on it is in a way of us being able to pick it up when the cubes are, or the cubes, the uh, bricks are in this, stones are in this, <laughs> this orientation. We're just going to go through every single name for these things. Um, so 
one of the first things that we want to be talking about is potentially an active intake. So Kelly um, had a couple, had a pretty good idea on something to do here, uh, potentially a, a wheeled intake that you could basically come in at it um, at one or the two orientations, more than likely like long ways. Yeah, more more than likely long ways here, uh, just because that allows you uh, a little bit more range of range of acquisition on the sides there. So um, we have two different sets of wheels here. We have large wheels and we have small wheels. And so um, with uh, most active intakes, the idea is that these the contact on here is gonna be able to like pinch in almost on the sides to grab that, grab this stone and be able to manipulate it where you want. Um, in addition to having an active intake, we can also have a passive intake, something like a pincher or a claw that can also grip onto the sides of these stones and be able to lift them up and move them around how, however you want. So that's gonna be another one that we're gonna go through and test and prototype is trying to grab something where since you're gonna be looking at the vision targets that are on there to be able to kind of come up and over and grab and then being able to move it and then reset that down onto a piece. So those are gonna be kind of the two separate ways that we're gonna kind of go and keeping in mind a few things that are going on with these game pieces as we kind of design and go forward. Hey everybody. Um, this is one of the prototypes that we wanted to put together. It is a pincher. So you'll notice, you know, it kind of pinches like that, right? So the reason we wanted to do the pincher um, in that particular orientation is we thought about how the stones start at the beginning of the, uh, of the match. And if we had the pincher squeeze the block skinny ways like this, you'd have to go to the end of the row in order to do that successfully. But if we come in from the top and pinch in this orientation like that, we're able to pick any one stone out of the, out of the line that we want. So I'm using the servo programmer and the smart robot servo to uh, kind of simulate and uh, you know, you can absolutely do this to do your prototyping. So you can go in and grab that guy. The way it works is I have a linkage right here that connects to this front jaw. Um, and I'm able to set the amount of travel that the end of this jaw has by changing the position of this, uh, of this eye um, on the linkage in order to get as much pinch and as much openness as I want. That's uh, our first little prototype. And the way it uh, stacks, you can kind of lift up like that, right? And you know, that's, you can drop down, grab the next one, come over, drop it on, grab the next one, drop it on. So the next steps are to put this on some sort of lift or on an arm or something you know something that you can attach to the front of your drivetrain for it to be able to you know drive off and manipulate the actual stones so this is the wheeled intake that i've been working on that's an alternative to the pinch intake that we showed earlier so the this intake design is pretty straightforward pretty simple there's two wheels on each side of the intake um, this allows it to not torque when we're in taking a stone. Um, in addition to that, we have compliance on one side to allow us to better um, grip the stone as it comes in to the intake. Uh, for that, we use the hinge kit here on the corner. And what this means is this allows this side to bend, but using this outward shape, outward shape setup allows there to be a built-in stop for this so that um, we can tension this however we want. And so as you can see here, um, we're just using a simple piece of um, surgical tubing to give us that tension to, to close these motors or to close these wheels around the stone while it's intaking. So we're going to demonstrate that now. So as you can see, um, this kind of intake, uh, as opposed to the other intake we showed earlier, is better for picking up cubes in this lengthwise direction um, instead of coming down over the top. So as these are lined up in this orientation on the field, it's very easy to come in from the end and just pick them off, pick them up and take off. And this makes a lot of sense for uh, when cubes are in your uh, depot. 
because you can place them in any orientation you want by placing them in this direction with this style of intake it makes it really straightforward um but as you know this intake is not perfect um there's a lot of things that could be improved about it but um it's a very straightforward intake that is built out of using just simple um pieces hey everybody um welcome back uh so we've been prototyping uh, some stuff and we decided to go with our pincher uh, manipulator as a uh, as we think that'll be um, very flexible and Work really well in a lot of different applications. So we're prototyping up the lift right now um, and uh, We decided to do a three-stage lift uh, because when you make your robot to fit under the uh, 14 inches of the uh, of your uh, sky, bridge. sky bridge, that's the one. Um, of your sky bridge, you're going to need to have more stages in order to get the full height. So you know, sure, we might be able to get up super high right now, um, but once we cut these down to 14, um, it'll it'll get a lot shorter. So next, we have to build kind of our mechanism that will actually hold the, uh, the claw, you know, and rotate it up and down. So we hope you've learned a lot from our thing, uh, from our prototyping today. Uh, you can take these ideas on with you throughout the season, and uh, we'll post some more images and, and small s snippets to our social media, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you build. So. Uh, we hope you have an awesome season, and we hope this serves as inspiration for your team. See ya.